cool guys so in this uh, session we are going to discuss the educational code forces round 145 that was rated for div 2 so we will be going for the problem a b c and d so let's get started with the very first problem the very first problem is uh, a that is garland and i'll not be going through the problem statement i hope that if you are watching this uh, if you are in the session you have already gone through the problem statement at least right but still the problem states that you uh, you would be given four colored light bulb bulbs right initially all of them would be off now what you need to do is that if a certain bulb uh, bulb is off you can switch it up right but the process is that you are having four bulbs all of them are off so definitely you will be uh, you will require to switch all of them but it can't be the case that let's say you switched on zero then you can't switch off uh, the other zero again right so if you switched on a zero then the next bulb you are going to switch on is has to have a different number right so that's the process we are going to follow so let's see how we can solve this this is actually a very easy question okay cool so basically we have four, four bulbs right is there a case we won't be able to turn off all uh, turn on all of them yes there would be a case for example let's say all the bulbs are of the type 0 right then let's say i switched on the first bulb so this got switched on but then the previous bulb i've switched on is actually uh, of type 0 so i can't switch on this particular bulb right so i can only switch on one bulb if all the bulbs are of same type now let's consider another scenario all the bulbs are of different type so this was some a this was some b this was some c this was some d in this case i can switch on all the bulbs right so i'll switch on firstly a then i can switch on b because the previous bulb i switched on was of a different type then i can switch on d then a d so that would work and if all the bulbs are of different types then my answer is 4 now what if uh, two bulbs are of the same type so could be like a a b c right so i can switch on a but then i cannot switch on this a then i'll say okay i'll switch on this particular b right i'll switch on this now i can switch on a because the previous bulb i switched on was b so i'll switch on this a then c this would also work one case is that what if you have three a's right and then a c now what would you do in this case let's say you switch on a right then you can't switch on another a so you'll say okay i'll switch on c this got switched on Let's say when I uh, double tick, that means switched on. Uh, when it's a single tick, uh, stick or no ticks, that means switched off. Cool. Then you will say that okay, I want to switch on A. That you can do. So you will say okay, I'll switch on this particular A. What now? Now you will say that I can't switch on this particular A because the previous bulb I've switched on is this, right? Which is also A. So what you can do is you will say that okay, no problem. I'll switch off this C, right? Okay. So you're gonna switch this off. And now you can switch this on. Cool. but now currently you are only having these three bulbs switched on now you want to uh, you need to spend one more move to switch this particular bulb on now how many moves it required is three bulbs to switch on these right then you switched on this uh, bulb so that was three plus one moves and then uh, you did a pair of moves that is you switched uh, switched it off and you switched it on again right so that was two moves so in total it requires six moves uh do we have another kind of scenarios yes there could be scenarios like a a b b these are simple to handle what you can do over here is that you can say that okay a b a b would come first then a a would come then a b would come then a a would come this kind of scenarios can be made right so basically the uh, problem statement boils down to writing it in uh, in such a uh, in such a way that the two consecutive elements are not same cool so that is the solution for this okay uh Wait a second. Yeah, this is the solution. So I'm checking if my size is one. That means all the uh, okay. So firstly, what I did is that I stored each of the character in a set. Now this is one way of doing it. You could have done it in any way that uh, as you like. You could have actually used a map over here itself. And instead of this, you can actually okay. Give me a second. Okay. Could have actually done this. And instead of now set, you can have you could have set map. it would still have made the same thing cool cool it would still pass it actually means the same uh, thing still so what i'm checking is if my size is a 1 or if i have all the bulbs of the same type then i can not re uh, reach to answer print minus 1 if my size is greater than equal to 3 that means i have at least three different type of bulbs as i already showed in that case answer would be 4 but if now let's say i have only two bulbs so uh, greater than equal to 3 or one case is covered the only case is uh, left is that you are having two types of bulbs uh, bulbs right two types okay. 
two types of bulbs. Now, in case you are having two types of bulbs, then uh, one case is that both of them would be having quantity two and two, right? In that case, for example, A A B B. In that case, you can say A B A B or B A B A, whatever you want to do that. The other case is you can have two different types of bulbs like this, right? Okay, so like this, like triple quantity of one type and the uh, and single quantity of other type. In this case, the answer would be six. We already discussed that, right? So if this is the type wherein uh, the elements are having a frequency two, in that case, I'll print four. Else, I'll print six. So this was the solution. Any doubt so far? Wait, that's all. Yep. That was simple. Mm, yep, that was simple. That was problem A actually. The problem A uh, is kind of simple. Uh, problem B, uh, I, I'll be frank with you guys. Uh, problem B, uh, I was trying to draw it actually, right? But I was not able to find a clear pattern. So I did what we actually do. So I tried to uh, like brute force it up. Initially, I did it a, a bit wrong, right? What I, uh, okay. So what I did is I tried to get the answers for some of the integers, right? So I was able to draw a trend then. So it's not like I came up with a solution or a formula like I generally do. But over here, I was able to analyze that. Uh, let's say, okay, let's just discuss the problem for uh, in case someone has not even read it. So the problem states that you are given a two-dimensional plane and you need to place n chips on it. You can place a chip at any uh, only at a point with integer coordinates. So it cannot be like 0 0.1, 0 0.6, something like that. Can't be there. Uh, the cost of placing a chip on the point x y is equal to modulus of x plus modulus of y, right? Or you can say, uh, sorry, absolute value of x plus absolute value of y. Uh, then the cost of placing n chips is equal to the maximum amongst the cost of each of the chips. Cool. Uh, you need to place n chips on the plane in such a way that the Euclidean distance between each pair is strictly greater than 1. Now what the Euclidean distance is, I hope you know that, but in case you don't, then basically if you are having two points x1, y1 and x2, y2, then absolute difference of x, uh, x1 and x2 and absolute difference of y2 and y2, when we sum them up, we get the Euclidean distance. Then they said, uh, say that, okay, this is the way we'll be giving you points. So, so number of test cases followed by the number of chips you are having. Cool. So one thing you can observe over here is if you are having a single chip, right? So if you are having a single chip, then you can say that, okay, it's cool enough. I can place it at zero, zero. Now, what is the score? The score is actually mod zero or oh, sorry, absolute value of zero plus absolute value of zero. That is zero. Now let's say I say that, okay, let me give you some more chips what's happening over here is uh, the number of chips are let's say three okay three chips how can you place them so they have also given the uh, way of placing this so you can say at minus one zero right minus one and a zero then a zero comma one and a one comma zero right so this are, this is the way you can place it so let's try to draw it on a number line or on a x y axis so minus one zero considering this is y and this is x and this is y and this is x right so minus one zero would lie over here right okay not over here but give a second let me draw it with a different color it would lie somewhere over here right minus one zero the other chip it wanted is uh, zero one right so where would zero one lie so zero one would lie over here then one zero would lie over here and then uh, the, uh, three chips are already done. Can you place one more chip over here? Yes, you can actually place one more chip. So you can place a chip over here. In case it was given, it's not provided. Obviously, it's not ask you. To, uh, uh, it's not asking you to do that. But if it was asked, then you can have four chips over here. So one thing I get to know is that zero chips for uh, for sorry one chip you need you have answer zero. For two, three, four chips you have answer one. Right. Now, what if you needed more chips? So what you could have done is that you'll say that, okay, I'll place something at, okay, let me draw it again. Okay. Uh, Lakshya has sent one structure for B. Yeah, that's what I'm going to draw. I think the structure he has uh, sent would be something like this. Is it something of this sort? Yeah, it's similar. Yeah, I'm going to draw that only. But anyway, let's see what Lakshya has sent. Okay, wait a second. Yep. Yeah, the structure. So Lakshay, uh, this points will be placed. Yeah, uh, this way points would be placed, definitely. Now, once you try to place the points in this manner, you'll recognize that initially, okay, so this is the structure he drew. I was also going to draw the same. So this is zero, zero. Then it's uh, one, zero, right? One, zero cannot be placed. But if you're doing this, then you can say that, okay, I'm going to place something over here. 
so that's actually one one right then you have a minus one and a one then you have a one and a, okay a minus one and a minus one then you'll have a one and a minus one right okay so it's distance right now whatever points i'm having its score is actually two right can i have more points with score two yes definitely i can have them so i can have a minus two and zero i can also have a zero comma minus two i can also have a two zero and a zero two cool so in this way we can actually keep building our uh, array or we can keep uh, build, uh, uh, building our uh, you can say the uh, structure we are forming and you'll realize that the answer you're getting is that for one chip the answer is zero for two three four chips the answer is one right for four to nine chips or oh, sorry not four to nine but five to nine chips the answer is two so on so forth now if you look at the last digits these are basically this uh, uh perfect squares. squares right what squares yeah, squares yeah these are squares right so you can say that if you're getting a perfect square okay yeah so if you're getting a perfect square then the answer would be it's square root minus one right if it's not a perfect square so for example these all numbers are not perfect squares seven eight nine then the answer would be simply it's square root now this was based on observation now i'm pretty sure that uh, somewhere in geome uh, geometry you have some complicated proofs for this and uh, they would definitely work right but our pro uh, our idea always has to be to solve the question in the quickest time possible so other than, uh, rather than remembering some proofs and trying to implement it in the uh, in the uh, contest what is actually beneficial is that you try to write down the right uh, to uh, try to write down the test cases and the answer you're getting corresponding to that most of the cases uh, most of the times in problem a and problem b you'll be able to detect some kind of a pattern which is being used and then you can use utilize that particular pattern to get to your answer like i did it for this particular question so if i go to the code so the code is actually pretty pretty small so in the code i'm saying if n is equal to 1 right then my answer is 0 else i'll just take a square root and yeah one thing i go i actually messed it up in the first go that's why i got a uh, wrong answer in test case 1 you have to take a, a long square root over here not this uh, standard in the generally we actually take square root right this actually works for int or double i don't know it probably works for int right but over here you were actually having long values you can look at this so your answer could have gone up to 10 to power 18 right so for that reasons you should have taken this particular square root l uh, functionality not square root and then you'll check if it's a perfect square so this is a way of checking if it's a perfect square if your uh, if you uh, get the integer uh, integer number and you multiply it by the same and if you're still getting n then mean uh, then that means it's a perfect square if it's a perfect square your answer is sq minus 1 else your answer is sq cool so any doubts in this Okay, so uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, square root l. So, uh, like for square root, you have multiple functions that you can use it, utilize in C plus plus, right? Now, the standard square root function that we use, it's uh, it it cannot process values that up go up to ten to power sixteen. For that, you have to use this function square root l. Makes sense? Okay, cool. Let's move ahead to problem C, which I uh. Think a lot of people, a uh, lot of you people didn't do right. So it's an interesting problem. It's not a difficult, but definitely an interesting problem. So the problem states that for a array a, a one up to a n, let's denote it sub array, uh, sub array a l comma r as the array a from l to r. Right. For example, the array a is equal to one minus three one, and then they have provided what are the sub arrays. What you need to do is that you are given two integers n and k. You have to construct an array a consisting of n integers such that All of the elements a are in this particular range, right? And a has exactly k sub arrays with positive sums. Cool. So these uh, and the rest. So important observation over here is, or important thing to note is that they are saying that these k sub arrays should have positive sums, and the remaining sub arrays, all the remaining sub arrays should have negative sums. So we cannot have array with uh, sum zero, right? This is important. Now they say that. uh you will be provided with two values n and k and you have to print any possible array right so it's not that you have to print uh, a array that is lexicographically smallest or anything of that sorts you just have to print a array that is valid cool so let's have a look also the, over here they have actually mentioned it's constructed by mathematics yeah it's actually constructed by mathematics nothing more than that so let's have a look at what we can do so simple thing with arrays is 
Okay, give me a second. Yep. A simple thing with arrays is that if I if I consider any particular point i, so let's consider for this uh, this question only. Let's consider one base indexing, right? So we are considering one base indexing. I am at a point I uh, at I am at a point j. How many arrays are possible which end at j? So total number of j arrays are possible. I can either have j itself or this, right? Or this, or this, or this, right? These are the possibilities that I have. Now, what I can do is that I can say that I'll always start my array with positive numbers. So I'll be having positive numbers from left to right. Then I'll reach a point where I'll want that I don't want any more uh, positive arrays, right? Or positive sub arrays. What I can do to hinder that? Now over here they had mentioned that n is less than or equal to thirty. So if if I only go with elements two, 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 and so on, it's not a case that the elements need to be distinct or anything of that sort. So let's say I just have elements that are two, 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 and so on. So over here I can have a very, very negative value. <clears throat> let's say minus thousand or minus nine, 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 whatever you want to put over there. What this would do is that this would cap it. Now let's say all the values to this end is also negative. Now your positive numbers or positive subarrays would be limited to this particular range only. Cool. But now the problem is that let's say all of these arrays are positive, that they always uh, obviously would be positive since all the numbers are positive, so all the subarrays would also be positive. So their sum would be given by or the number of subarrays over here would be j into let's say these are, uh, this is the index j, right? So you have j, uh, j indices over here, so your number of subarrays would be j into j plus one divided by two. Now it's possible that the value of k or the number of subarrays or the number of positive subarrays they actually demanded. Was not equal to this kind of a number, right? What would we do in that case? So in that case, what we can do is that we can configure the value of the next element or the first negative element in such a manner that it's able to build some kind of positive arrays with the rest of the array. So what do I mean by that? Yeah. So let's say you are having three values, two to two, right? So ha by having two to two, you already have six subarrays. 3 into 4 divided by 2, that is 6. Right? You'll be having this, then this. These are 3 sub arrays, then this is the 4, this is the 5th, and collectively they form the 6 sub arrays. But let's say your question asked you to provide, uh, or uh, and let's say your n was actually maybe like 5 over here, and the question wanted you to give, give, it, give it 7 sub arrays. So till this time, you have already made 6 sub arrays, right? Now the value you're gonna put over here definitely needs to be negative. There's no doubt about that. Because if it if it's positive, then the number of positive subarrays would actually become uh okay, four into five divided by two, that would actually be ten. You don't you can't afford that. You cannot have more than uh seven sub uh, subarrays which are positive. So what kind of a value would you put over here? So the kind of value I want to put at this particular location is uh, should be such that it gives me only one uh, one subarray that is positive. How can I do that? Now what I can say is that let's put a value minus 5 over here maybe, right? As soon as I put a value minus 5, what happens is that this subarray or uh, to formalize, I can say if I st if I end my subarray at this particular location, right? I'm ending my array at this particular location. Then this array and this array would actually be negative, right? This array, uh, this array would be a 5 minus 2, that is minus, oh, sorry, 2 minus 5, that is minus three, this array would be four, uh, five minus four, that is minus one, right? But however, when I'll consider this entire array, cool, this would become six minus five, that is equal to one, that is a positive subarray. Cool enough, that that justifies my needs, but how did, did I get to this number? So a very easy thing to observe is that basically, I want, I know that uh, from uh, starting from the left, right? Uh, okay, starting uh, starting from the very right, going towards my left. The first arrays that I'm gonna perform would have more uh, more uh, contribution from this negative number, right? So they have a better probability of becoming negative. As I get to the end, right, the contribution of more positive numbers come into picture. Is this point clear to everyone? Like as I go uh, from uh, right to left then the contribution of positive numbers increase. 
because to my left i am having positive numbers so i just want so let's say i wanted over here i wanted one more sub array that is positive let's say i just want x sub arrays to be positive x more sub arrays to be positive right in that case i only want that x number of sub arrays from here from 0 to x right from 0 to x should have a positive value that's what i want right as soon as i get rid of this co uh, this particular element right or this element would be filled by the value 5 in this in our case then for the remaining elements over here n uh, n was equal to 5 so there would be only one element remaining or let's say there were even like hundreds of elements remaining for all of this uh, all of those i can simply put minus triple nine because now taking this uh, this into consideration if i uh, club it with all the positive numbers even then it would be having a value negative cool that makes sense any doubts guys any doubts in this no nope. uh, okay rocker so yeah uh, from now we are planning to have this disc or discussion after the contest and probably directly after the contest so we will not be waiting for the next day okay Okay, the banker, you're uh, sending the code for this one. Actually, not required. You need not uh, do all of that. I have a bit uh, more intuitive code. Let me show you that. Yes, sir, I did the same as well. Yeah. So yeah, I think they, uh, this is the best way of doing it. Uh, okay, let me just show yes, you the sir. code. Okay, I wanted to show you one more thing. That we didn't take value one over here. Now, why is that the case? We could have taken a value one, right? But we didn't take one because with one, what happens is that let's say, okay. Let's say I uh, took minus six over here or minus four over here, just to satisfy that I need maybe like four arrays from the here to here, right? So I took a value minus four. Okay, so I needed positive, so I took a, a value. Uh, okay. Yep. So one, two, three, four, five. So I'll say. Okay, this is uh, these are five values. If I subtract four, I get a one, right? Okay. So I just needed one more value, so I took this four. But now, what would happen is, what would be the sum of this? For this particular scenario, its sum would actually be zero. So one sub array is having a sum zero, which we cannot afford. They already said that uh, k sub array should be having a positive sum, and the remaining n minus k should have a negative sum. Over here, we are having one sub array with a sum zero. We can't do that. So in order to avoid that, I have specially taken two. Right. Now why two? because what i can do is i can set this particular number to be odd right now when you are subtracting a even number or odd number from a even number you'll never get zero you'll either at least get minus 1 or plus 1 so in order to avoid the zero i took a, uh, i started these values with twos and not ones cool uh, let's look at the code dipankar you code in uh, python uh, in python that's the simplest plus one Okay, cool. Uh, yes. This Thanks, bro. Yes, don't. Uh, yeah. Finding the uh, last number. Like, yeah. I printed three, 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 and what should oh. be the value of the next integer so that yeah, the. Uh, yeah, I have actually done two, two, two. So it doesn't matter. Basically, just need to get the answer right. So there are multiple ways of doing it. Is the screen fine now? Are you able to see it? Yes. Okay, cool. Oh, uh, okay. So firstly, what I'm doing is I'm taking a value done. Now done basically means number of. positive sub arrays made cool so currently uh, start uh, not even have starting the processing number of sub arrays you have actually made is zero so it will be zero initially then you'll say that if i consider all the sub arrays considering the current element so from the very left if i consider all the sub arrays where the current element serves as the last number of the sub array then how many sub arrays do ha do i have i have actually i sub arrays because i am starting from i is equal to 1 right so i'll say that if considering that also my uh, requirement either completes or even it, it doesn't complete it actually does not exceeds my requirement in that case i can accept all of these numbers if i can do that i'll add it to my uh, done and i'll print a two so these are the leftmost positive sub arrays right what is the other case now other case is that this doesn't happen didn't happen so you cannot use all the sub arrays but there are a few sub arrays that you need to use right so in that uh, but uh, how would you know that so if you're done still less than k that means a few more sub arrays are required then you'll say that how many sub arrays are required 
so i need k minus done arrays right you'll set done to k so that you don't keep processing this or you can have set it to any any value you can set it to 1 is 6 1 is 6 might be possible let's set it to 1 it uh, 1 it 12 this kind of gives me anxiety anyway so now uh, how many numbers do you need negative so you need i minus 1 minus required right because okay so you have actually multiplied two over here let's just consider that how many uh, sub arrays or uh, i over uh, over here actually multiplied by minus 2 so as to negate the effect of having all twos and not ones over here so i hope that makes sense and then i say minus 2 into need neg minus 1 Now this value, for example, in our case where we were having two, 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 right, and then we wanted to put a value over here to as so as to get a uh, one sub array only. So we put minus five over here because using minus five, when we combine the entire sub array, we get a one. But when we can, uh, when we have another sub arrays like this sub array, then we get a uh, uh, minus one, and when we have this, we get a mi uh, minus three. How would you get that? This is the way to get that, right? A simple mathematical uh, statement. Dipanka has done it in a different manner. So he actually used a pre-sum matrix. So you can uh, you can utilize this, or you can utilize whatever you want. It's just about getting the concept done, right? So if this is possible, print this. Now the other case is that you already have all the uh, positive subarrays that are required. In that case, you want to cap it. Now it should not be the case that you uh, let's say you put a minus one, right? So let's say I put a minus one that I need a negative value. and because uh, let's say i had all twos and twos over here right so because of that it actually gets corrupt because now this 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 all of these are actually uh, a negative uh, all of these are actually values that would give uh, that would uh, give you positive uh, severity right now also over here n is actually limited to 30 so in the worst case scenarios you can have actually 20 29 uh, 29 times you can have twos 29 into 2 is actually a very small number it's just 58 right so you just need any value that is greater than 58 so you could have written 100 or you can write anything you want that's going to suffice over here uh, our maximum value could have been minus 1000 so i just wrote minus triple line but even minus 58 or minus 60 would do the trick over here you can try it with minus 60 if you want it don't matter okay it's anyway going to give me wrong answer over here because uh, this this system is actually dumb it doesn't knows that uh, sys uh, that the question can have a, can have multiple answers and it just checks it with the expected output so i'm getting wrong answer but yeah it's correct cool let's uh, oh, any doubts so far and this maybe okay bro uh, once can i explain it again uh, when done is less than less than k cool sure okay so when done is less than k that means you need okay need some more positive sub arrays correct now as i already told you that if you need some positive sub arrays so the most contribution of positive numbers would be there when you go till the till leftmost right so till leftmost if you are going to go then you get going to get some positive sub arrays so now the case would be that you are having some positive numbers like this let's p denote some positive numbers and you want to put a negative number over here such that okay such that if you come to this particular point now let's say if you come to this particular point or this particular sub array what it's going to uh, some going to be so it's going to be p plus p plus p plus p five times right or let's just call it j into p right plus n the next element is going to have a sum or since n is negative let's call it minus n cool the next element is going to have a sum j into p minus 1 okay p minus 1 minus n next element is going to have a sum j into p minus 2 minus n and so on j into p minus 1 or j minus 1 into p oh sorry thank you okay Okay, yeah. Cool. Now th this is uh, these are the sums that you are going to get. Now is it possible that p into j minus one minus n is positive and this isn't? It can ne never be that case, right? So that's why I said that the arrays or sub arrays which are ending at n, right, and starting at somewhere to its left. So the leftmost sub array would be positive, right? 
and as we come to it's uh, as we come closer to n then they would start becoming negative that makes sense now at least that makes sense yes okay yes cool. so that makes sense. cool so now i want that let's say i wanted only uh, one sub array to be positive that means that i want that j into p minus n is greater than 0 makes sense right and j into p minus 1 okay p okay p into j minus 1 sorry minus n is less than 0 correct now yes, what sir. value should i plug over here now what value should i plug that's the question now over here i can say that the number of sub arrays that should be negative are these many starting from j i know that i need required sub arrays to be positive so what are the number of uh, arrays that should need to be negative i minus 1 minus required obviously right any problem over here oh uh, if it's clear shall we move it or any problems over here i think some of you were having a doubt right cool i think that was uh, enough of an explanation that we are moving negative and uh, positive i hope that this thing is clear if you are uh, if you are having trouble with mic or something and you couldn't uh, tell your doubt then yes samajh to aa gaya cool okay let's move ahead then to d okay okay so the problem d is that you are given a binary string s consisting of only zeros and ones right you can perform the following operations on the string so you can choose two consecutive elements and swap them in order to perform this operation you need 10 to power 12 coins and or you can choose any element from the string and remove it in order to perform this kind of operation you need 10 to power 12 plus 1 coins cool now your task is to calculate the minimum number of coins required to sort the string s in non decreasing order so non decreasing order basically means it should be all zeros followed by all ones right how do you do it now there are several observation you can make the okay let me to my pad yeah so the very first observation is that would it be ever you know beneficial for you to delete or uh, to swap rather than deleting let's see what happen when we swap so if we swap to numbers let's say that 1 0 right so that becomes 0 and 1 also the cost for swap is actually 10 to power 12 the cost of deleting is actually 10 to power 12 plus 1 in these kind of scenarios it actually would be beneficial right if i'm having a zeros followed by a one right in that kind of a scenario it would have been beneficial okay not a zero followed by one followed by a zero but let's say i had one followed by a lot of zeros would it be beneficial then actually not because no. even if you're going to swap it right then you'll have to swap it again 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 and again so it's only beneficial if you have if you are having scenarios like one and zero but what you can do is you can start traversing from left left side itself right and then you can check that standing at a uh, so you can have two variables so let's say a p equal to 0 or let's say you can have two variables z and o these basically uh, mean the count of zeros and ones right so you can preprocess them so that you will know that how many zeros are there in the string and how many ones are there in the string once you have them then you can say that if i'm going from left to right and i'm standing at any particular index i i'll also be preprocessing the elements so let's call them pz p0 so they basically uh, their count basically denotes how many zeros and ones you have seen cool so you will know that how many uh, zeros and how many ones you have seen and how many ones and zeros are actually remaining now if your current variable uh, current index or current element is a one right and the next element is a zero then what you can do then you can say that okay there's a probability that i swap them and even then i'll be getting a better answer but it needs to be noted that since we already talked about this right this kind of scenarios so this should come uh, as no surprise that even in your best case scenario one only one swap would take place right only one swap would take place there would be no scenarios where you will be having two swaps right only one swap would take place always because if you are have uh, if you are uh, requiring more than one swaps then you can actually have deleted it itself right so let's say i wanted to move one from here to maybe some other location right and if it requires more than one swaps then i could have simply deleted it in a sing uh, single operation i could have deleted it 
because uh, more than one swaps is going to take me n into 10 to power 12 operations whereas one deletion would only take me 10 to power 12 plus one operations so if my n is greater than one then this value actually becomes greater than this value i hope this is not some magical science and it's pretty clear so what i can say is that if i'm getting some scenario like this right what i'll say is that there are two possibilities for me either i stand at this particular element right i say that let's delete all the elements to its left which are ones all ones to my left right and i'll also need to delete either all ones to my right or all zeros to my right if you do that then the thing you are going to get is because to your left you have already uh, deleted all the ones so there would be some empty or non empty strings but it would not have any ones it would only have zeros if it has any elements for, uh, for that matter then to your right if you deleted all the ones then you'll have all zeros if you deleted all zeros then you'll be having all ones in either case it would be sorted cool what's the other thing i can do so i can say that okay i'm having a one zero one more thing i can do is that let's say i swap them swap them as soon as i swap them they become zero and one right and now i'll be standing at a zero so let's do the same thing again let's calculate that what is the answer if i delete everything every one to my left and every zero to my uh, and either every zero or every one to my right this was the solution i know it sounds easy now but uh, this was it i can't make it complicated if it's easy got the solution wait can you repeat the last part okay sure so this is your array right you're standing at any any element forget it being a zero or a one you at least know that how many elements are there in this subarray that are zero zeros and how many array are there in the subarray that are ones you can also know that how many array are there in the right part which are actually zeros and ones now if you delete all zeros sorry not all zeros but yeah if you delete all the ones from here cool and all uh, and either all the zeros or all the ones from here too right if you do that in that case your array would be sorted makes sense so uh, for minimum cost we have to delete the one which have a lower count like if we yeah. have less zeros then we delete that yeah you can do any of these operations right because either way you will be having either all ones to your right or all zeros to your right and because to your left you have all zeros so it won't actually matter cool either way it's going to be sorted if you take this if you take this either way it's going to be sorted cool yep the other scenario is that you'll say that okay i'm having a zero over here and a one over here let's try to swap them and then check for the answer we'll check for both of these we can actually check that it won't take much of a time right it just takes a order of one operation to check this we can do that clear now cool okay uh, i got it okay anyone else has a doubt over here okay i'm assuming that it's clear to everyone so let's get started with it so yeah i actually did a lot of debugging for this so probably there would be a lot of variables that don't make any sense for that matter for example it's set to do a over here not i and all that stuff so take the strings right process the number of zeros and uh, ones it has store them then this means actually the number of processed zeros processed initially they are set to zeros because you are not processed anything then you start traversing from the left end itself now if the current element is 1 increment processed ones if it's zero increment processed zeros now one case is that you could have a scenario like a one followed by a zero right like the scenario over here in this kind of a scenario you can say that what i'll do is i'll swap them as said as soon as you swap them so what would happen is because your right element is zero your current element is one if you swap these then in your current array you will be having a zero and the number of ones would actually get decreased right so wherever i'll say number of processed ones i'll Uh, decrease one from them wherever i want to know the number of zeros that are present in uh, sorry number of ones that are pre present in my right part i'll add one to it right i hope that makes sense so that's what i'm going to do so i'll say that the current answer if i do this so if i do this then i need one uh, operation for swapping okay one op for swapping the value for that is given by this sw i already so, uh, saved the value over here 
this is swapping and this is uh, deleting i'll use one swapping and then either uh, or uh, and firstly then i'll delete all the ones to my left right so all the ones that are to my left i'll delete them and i'll delete either all the zeros or the ones to my right cool i can uh, set uh, my uh, answer to be minimum of this or whatever i have initially right and then what's the other case so other cases that this kind of a scenario didn't happen but still i can delete all the ones to my left and either of the zeros or the ones to my right cool if i do that then i'll say that my answer is po that is the number of ones to my left multiplied the, by the coins needed to delete them plus i'll be deleting the minimum of zeros or the ones which are to my right and i'll save them in this so this was uh, the question d i hope this also made sense now one interesting thing is that not a lot of people actually did it so if i look at the problems then yeah only 1000 people did it whereas 13000 people did a so i hope you were able to understand the problem now one thing could happen that che cheaters didn't leak it so that could be one of the reason that not a lot of people were able to do it so i hope you were able to understand it if you still have a doubt you can let me know but i think it was okay me didn't part okay okay cool uh, yeah i was uh, i hope that you are able to understand it let me close the recording and then you can ask any further doubts if you have